It's Medicosis Perfectionalis, where medicine makes perfect sense. Today, we have another anatomy video. We'll talk about the anatomy of the biliary system. The liver makes bile. This bile should leave the liver and go to the gut, especially the duodenum, which is part of the gastrointestinal tract. But what if we do not need all of this bile? Then you can store it in this lovely sack known as the gallbladder. But why do we need bile anyways? You need bile to digest and therefore absorb fat or lipids. If you remember your four abdominal quadrants, we have right upper quadrant, left upper quadrant, right lower quadrant, and left lower quadrant. Where the flip is the liver and biliary system here in the right upper quadrant, in the vast, vast, vast majority of people. In some rare cases, such as situs inversus totalis, where your viscera are basically flipped, you will see that your liver went to the left side and the spleen went to the right side. But in most people, the liver is here. How about the abdominal regions? We have nine abdominal regions. We have right hypochondrium, epigastric, left hypochondrium, then right lumbar, umbilical, left lumbar, right iliac, hypogastric, left iliac. Where the flip is the liver and the biliary system? Mostly here. Yes, the tip of the left lobe of the liver might bulge here and maybe the inferior part here, but who cares? It's in the right hypochondrium. All right, anatomically speaking, the liver has two lobes, the right lobe and the left lobe. As you see here, the right lobe is large, the left lobe is small, relatively speaking. What is that beautiful ligament here dividing the liver into right and left lobes? It's called the falciform ligament. What the flip is the function of this? Well, it's a ligament, connective tissue basically, connecting the liver here to the diaphragm and the interior abdominal wall for support. And if you remember your embryology, this was the interior part of the ventral mesogastrium of the embryo. I know this sounds like gibberish to you. So again, anatomically speaking, the liver has right lobe and left lobe. Now, some other textbooks will divide this right lobe into two small sublobes, and they are the caudate and the quadrate lobes. Both are part of the right lobe, not the left. And here where it gets tricky, the caudate and the quadrate lobe belong morphologically to the right lobe, but structurally speaking, they are part of the left lobe. I know it's weird. There is another classification and it's called surgical classification of the liver or the surgical lobes. And you will have a surgical right lobe and a surgical left lobe, which is not the same as the anatomical ones. Now, enough with this nonsense. Let's go back to the basics. How many borders does the liver have? Well, the answer is three. You have an upper border, a lower border, and a right border. Okay. How many surfaces does the liver have? The answer is five. You have a superior surface, inferior surface. Awesome. Anterior surface and behind it, posterior surface. Cool. And number five is the right lateral surface, also known as the quadrilateral surface. All right, so we have right lobe and left lobe. Each lobe has lobules. Oh, this beautiful hexagon right there. Okay, nice. What do you find in the middle of the hexagon? You find liver cells, also known as hepatocytes. Perfect. What do you find at the edges of those hexagons? So one, two, three, four, five, six edges. You find a beautiful portal triad. The triad is made of a branch of the hepatic artery, a branch of the portal vein, and a branch of the bile duct. Okay, awesome. All right, we will supply those hepatocytes. The hepatocytes, like any cell, will take in oxygen and nutrients, and they will dump carbon dioxide and waste. Where do they dump them? They dump them here, onto the central vein in the lobule. Central vein from this lobule, plus central vein from this lobule, plus central vein from this lobule. Eventually, they end up in the hepatic veins, short veins that go from the liver and directly onto the inferior vena cava, which will take you to the right atrium of the heart. Again, this is the lobule. All right, I'm going this way. I'm starting here, portal vein, which is part of the triad. And then I supply the hepatocyte. The hepatocyte will take in oxygen and nutrients and will give away 
CO2 and waste and they will dump them here onto central veins. Central veins will coalesce together, join each other to make the lovely hepatic veins which will end up in the inferior vena cava. Now let's talk about the direction of each one. All right, you are a branch of the hepatic artery. Thank you so much. Are you going this way or this way? I'm going this way. So I take blood here from the common hepatic artery and I go up until I supply those hepatocytes. Thank you so much. How about you? I'm a branch of the portal vein. Which direction are you moving to? I'm moving in the same direction like the artery. Oh, so upwards. Yeah. How about the bile? No, I'm different. I'm moving downwards. Why are you moving downwards like this? Because I'm taking bile from the hepatocyte and I'm giving it away to the duodenum. But if I have an excessive amount, I am taking it from hepatocyte and storing it in the gallbladder. Here's your liver, right hepatic lobe, left hepatic lobe. All right, each lobe has a duct, right hepatic duct and left hepatic duct. Awesome. When the two hepatic ducts join each other, they make this common hepatic duct. Beautiful. This common hepatic duct is gonna join with something called the cystic duct. Where the flip is the cystic duct coming from? The cystic duct is the duct or the bottleneck of the beautiful sac known as the gallbladder, where you store the excessive amount of bile. Thank you. When the cystic duct join the common hepatic duct, they will form common bile duct or CBD, which means a totally different thing to Joe Rogan. I'm here in the common bile duct. This beautiful common bile duct is gonna join this pancreatic duct from the pancreas and they will open together here. Where do they open? They open in your gastrointestinal tract. Which part? The duodenum to be specific. Which part of the duodenum? The second part to be specific. Which aspect of the second part of the duodenum? The posteromedial aspect of the second part of the duodenum of the small intestine. Wow. Now, have you ever asked yourself, why did the common bile duct join with the pancreatic duct? Yeah, because both share the same function. What's that function? Fat digestion and therefore fat absorption, because you cannot absorb if you did not digest first. So first you digest, then you absorb. You need bile to digest fat. That's true. You need pancreatic enzymes such as lipase, colipase, phospholipase, etc. to digest fat. Yeah, since both of us are digesting fat, why don't we just join forces? and open together in the posteromedial aspect of the second part of the duodenum to digest fat together. Brilliant. So, in order to absorb fat, you need three organs. Number one, liver and the biliary system, of course. Number two, the pancreas. Number three, where will the absorption happen? In the small intestine. So, you need to have a normal, intact wall of the small intestine with beautiful brush borders. If you like this video, you will enjoy my renal physiology course on my website metacosisperfectionalis.com. It has 10 videos, 10 cases, notes, and my Perfectionalis Ultimate Notebook. For a limited time, you can get a 40% discount towards anything on my website. Just use discount code KIDNEY at checkout. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe, hit the bell, and click on the join button. You can support me here or here. Go to my website to download my courses. Be safe, stay happy, study hard. This is Medicosis Perfectionalis, where medicine makes perfect sense.